we have, uh, you and I, uh, some differences of view and opinion. But I have a great respect for the fact that you have invited me here, that you've invited me here to speak despite those differences. For the essential difference between free men and the subjects of totalitarianism is that free men can give voice and expression to their beliefs, that they can engage in the great dialogue in which the Western tradition has been built. So I am glad and I am proud to be here in Stellenbosch, at this town, at this university, and with all of you here today. Ik het hier zo op die campus groot geworden van dat ik zo oud was. It was a remarkable experience for a kid. There was always something to do and always something happening. Ik kon dat die tijd dat elke kost hij zijn eigen karakter gehad. Die ene was goed in rugby, die ene het bij leiers opgeleverd. En die jonger kost hij ze het gesukkel om een rol te krijgen. En hele rol hier zo bij Simonsberg was eindelijk maar net een van robustheid en effense anders gezondheid. Biki biki dwarsstrekerig geweest. Maar een gebeurtenis heeft voor Simonsberg baie bekend gemaakt. Niet net in die Korshuis nie, nie net op die campus nie, maar veel weier as dit. En dit was op 7 juni 1966, toe een van die groot sterre van die internationale politiek hier so kom eet het en hier so kom gesels het. Ek praat van Robert F. Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy, wat in die wit huis kom aansit het vir eet en gepraat het met die studente. Inauguration 1961. Upon the arrival of President-elect Kennedy's party, President Eisenhower went out to greet him and escorted his party into the White House. When John F. Kennedy became the President of the United States in 1961, he took his little brother along to the White House. Robert F. Kennedy was seven years younger, and at the age of 35, he became the Attorney General of the United States. The so-called Kennedy administration, to a great extent, was Robert F. Kennedy and the Justice Department. The work that they had done in terms of bürgerrechten was besonder actief geweest, vooral om segregatie te beëindigen. The, the Kennedys were, in fact, more than just royalty, as it were. They were cool. They were young. They were athletic. They had a certain glow around them. He was destined for great things. He was called to go up higher in politics. I'm very uh, grateful for the warm reception. I thought you gave a little too warm a reception to John Glenn. I thought you <laughs> perhaps forgot who the candidate was. To John F. Kennedy, do it in 1963. He did for Kennedy many a year to bedank. In 1965, when Robert Kennedy stood as a senator for New York, it was the first time that he was actually an elected official rather than just a public servant in the office of the president. And you get a clear sense that by 1965, he was looking for his calling in life. He was stress testing his values and he spent a lot of time traveling. He was in Europa, he was in South America and ook in South Africa. And in 1966, when he came here, he was scarce 40 years old met een baie sterk progressieve levensuitkijk en politieke beschouwing, het hij Zuid-Afrika aangetref in die middel van die gouden jaren van de grote apartheid. So dit is die diep ongemakkelijke klimaat waar Robert Kennedy hier aangekomen het. Ongemakkelijk meer voor Zuid-Afrika als wat het voor Robert Kennedy zelf is. He came to South Africa because he was invited by NUSAS, the National Union of South African Students, a liberal organization which didn't really bother the South African government if Kennedy came to speak to them as a liberal speaking to other liberals. I think the problem had come to Kennedy at the blue to ankondig hij is genoeg om stel een boos te komen praat. I'm particularly delighted, as in my own country, that there is a divergent point of view. I'm delighted that we're able to express it. And I'm delighted that you had the chance and the opportunity to go and write the sign, Yankee, go home. Many times in my own country of the United States, I've seen much worse signs. And I'm glad that those of you who welcome our visit, at least today, outnumber those who are opposed. 
He started at UCT and, and he gave a very good speech called the Ripple of Hope speech, which is well known. And then he came to Stellenbosch and in my opinion, he gave an equally good speech. Leslie, you are now al for 11 years in the inwonende hoof by Simonsberg. Tell us what the scene was in 7 June 1966 when the Kennedys arrived. Op die dag met die aankomst van die Kennedys, anders as wat het nou is, hier een rijpad was voorbij die kosshuis. Grond, rijpad waar karre kon kom stop. Dit was nog voor al die karre op kampus was. En dan die buite is een seer van, van mense, van kampus studenten, meestal lijk het my, maar ook bezoekers en mense van die media wat nou sien wat gaan die aan, om te kyk hoe die Kennedys lijk en of hy rarig is of arreveer of so. So ban, as ons nou instap, stap ons by die deur in waar Kennedy ingestap het. En jy sal nou sien op die foto so allemaal hier staan en wacht dat hy eerste moet ingaan. In the world of 1966, no nation is an island unto itself. Whether we wish it or not, a pattern of unity is woven into every aspect of the society of man. Ek herken vir Robert Kennedy en dit sal dan wees. Willem van Drummelen, dit was die primarius toe. In 1996, 30 jaar na Kennedy's bezoek, is daar een documentaire print gemaakt door Larry Shaw, uh, RFK in the Land of Apartheid. A Ripple of Hope was die programma zijn naam geweest. En hoe dankbaar moet de mens wees dat daar opname gemaakt is? Want daar is gepraat met Willem van Drummelen, wat destijds de primarius was, toen to Robert F. Kennedy gekomen het. En daar krijg je een perspectief tussen die middels nou en die diep verleden, van hoe het mense gedink in 1996 oor hierdie besoek daarvan. We want to just reshoot the take, please, of how it came about. The 60s in Afrikaner politics uh, were fairly emotional. In 1961, Dr. Vervoort uh, walked out of the Commonwealth to start off with. Uh, South Africa became a republic uh, of its own. It, Money changed from old pounds and shillings and pence to rands and cents. And it was in those times that Bobby Kennedy had made quite a few uh, remarks about South Africa and apartheid. I come here this evening because of my deep interest and affection for a land settled by the Dutch in the mid-17th century, then taken over by the British and at last independent. A land in which the native inhabitants were at first subdued, but relations with whom remain a problem to this day. I refer, of course, to the United States of America. What we at Simonsberg and my friends couldn't understand was that the government refused uh, to acknowledge his presence. So it would be regarded as a private visit to us, this was something uh, ununderstandable. We, we couldn't think that the future president of the United States of America uh, is not being talked to. Everyone thought this was a tremendous idea. Why don't we invite him to come and have lunch with us? One of the South African government's objections to your visit, uh, they banned your followers, your newsmen, your TV men. You want to go yourself a follower, am I? <laughs> I'd like to be. Mm. But they banned them and uh, because they say that uh, it might turn into a publicity stunt. What do you say to that? Well, I, I should ask you well, why the newsmen wanted to come. I think they're the ones to answer that. The Kennedys, I don't think, have ever lacked uh, interest in the media. So, uh, 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 Bobby Kennedy was politically so aware of the situation in South Africa that he knew that it would be important for his visit to South Africa to also have contact with the more conservative uh, political portion of South Africa, and in particular, Stellenbosch University. He was very aware of the fact that most of the intellectual leadership politically in South Africa emanated from Stellenbosch. I was with Jan Lau, who in 1962 the first year on campus, was, and in 1966 in Simonsberg was tijdens Robert Kennedy's visit. Simonsburg invited Robert Kennedy, and he then publicly responded to the invitation. That's correct, yes. And now it was public knowledge, you know, and this kind of news was now picked up by the, the people in command at Stellenbosch, you know, that he would be our guest of the day. And that's where the problems 
started, really. And then you became the guest of the rector as a house committee. That's correct. And we were commanded up to, in the, you know, to, to, to appear in front of the vice chancellor's committee by, by Professor Tom himself. Had you expected that there a reaction to that event? Or did you think that things were not happening? Not so drastic as what we expected. The summary of it all was that Tom said to us, now look, he cannot, uh, as a rector of the university, you know, tell us who to uh, invite and who to not invite because it's a private function and it's our right to, you know, host people we want to. But in this instance, he must just tell us one thing and that was very strict and straightforward, that if this man comes to uh, Simmersberg and anything uh, would be uttered by being detrimental to the good name of this alma mater of ours being this university of Stellenbosch. He said, then your, your, all of you, the 14 of you, all your academical careers would be in jeopardy. Full stop, straight. Robert Kennedy's visit to Simonsberg had uh, a few very amusing moments. Uh, Obviously, there were thousands of students in front of the residence to see him. It was, it was really like a, a rugby test at Newlands. I mean, it was crammed in. I met him in Ethel. He told me that he didn't know what to expect. And Simonsberg had the tradition that it never gave applause by clapping hands. The soup spoons were banged on the table. That was the manner in which uh, traditionally uh, the uh, inmates actually uh, applauded. When we entered the dining room, Bobby and I were in front, and Ethel was following with uh, the vice primarius of, of, of the hostel. And as the doors opened that we entered that room, 350 guys pushed their chairs back. <laughs> this sounded like thunder, and started belting their tables with their soup spoons. I want to tell you, both Ethel and Bobby must have jumped at least a meter high and were ready to run for it when I realized that I should have warned them about this. But obviously, that was no sign of hostility. It was a sign of welcome. Uh, his speech was something that I, till this day, uh, remember quite well. And uh, he made it possible for the students to feel that they are in included in what is happening in the world and not excluded as a result of the unpopularity of uh, the apartheid uh, policies. No longer can any people be oblivious to the fate and the future of any other. And no longer can any nation, no matter how tiny or powerful, no matter how wealthy or well-armed, be as free as it once might have been to ignore a far-off war or warning, to shrug off another nation's crisis or criticism, or to defy the concerns of the contempt of mankind. What do you think Kennedy said on the day that is still relevant today? And if you listen to the speech again or read through the speech, you quickly realize that the, the challenge part is connected to a sense of responsibility. The manner in which you are being asked to say, we are not so different from you. We are not as Americans who come and say, we are greater and better than you. I have told you, it's your country and mine, in four paragraphs after each other. Your country and mine created wealth. Your country and mine gained freedom. Your country and mine has a terrible capacity to destroy. In your country and mine, we fought for and achieved freedom for some of our people. But we have not yet learned, as Thomas Paine said, that no man or country can be really free unless all men and all countries are free. And the two spraak is a hoflijke stilte ontvang? Yeah, 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 that was not. 
Dit was een baie ordentelijkheid. Hij was een baie, baie, baie ordentelijk ontvang. Daar was geen tussenwerksels of aanmerkings of opmerkings. Hoe genaamd die? Uh, en ja, die ouders het hem ernstig aangevat en hij het bij, hij het geïrriteerd geraakt, met zeker van die goed dat hij hem weer leert. In termen van die Amerikaanse opzet en vergeleken met ons apathisch opzet, waar daar ook maar net zo so bij bij hulle ook gebeur het. I think if there's one thing that strengthened the resolve of the Simonsberg students and that endorsed the fact that they took the right decision, it was in fact his speech. Because he endorsed the fact that you must have the courage to take a decision that is not always popular. But if you think it's right, go for it. Were you aware of a unique ethos in Simonsberg when you arrived? It always felt a bit more open, a bit more welcoming. An individual can be an individual without, you know, being forced into a, a mold, a very specific mold. The sense of criticalness or the fact that you could question. The culture of Simonsberg, uh, I think, is definitely open-minded and, and inclusive, I think. We like to think of ourselves as, as mavericks, and I think that may be sprung from the whole Bobby Kennedy thing and the culture that was cultivated by that. And I think that's the most, you know, iconic takeaway for me personally, is that it set the tone from the beginning. You know, I can speak about this, I can voice my opinion on this, I can say this even though the Primaris is saying that. And I think, you know, that for me was what stood out the most. When I later on learned more about the story of the Kennedy visit, I realized that perhaps these two things are not completely separated from each other. So over the years, he has been telling the people all the time about the story, not only to me, but also to the first years in Komni. He is committed, he is going to take care of En, en ek moet sê, ek kan toch iets daarvan um, het waar geblei. Jy is weens daar oorlevering en ons vertel. Het, het jylle indruk gehad dat wat er inpak dit op die rest van die campus het? O ja, o ja, want jy weet, dit is een tyd gewees, uh, soos ek sê, waar my uh, politieke strieweling was wereldwijd uit, ek het jy ding in die 60e geweet. Rooi Danny daar in Frankrijk, jy weet die communistische opzet, jy weet, Hier in Zuid-Afrika, die hele Europa, die Amerika, hier weet. Maar ook op campus hier, hier weet, was daar hier die... Ons het, die, ons het hier die prikkels geskop, ons het die orde gedaag, hier weet. Want ons het nie saamgestem met alles nie. Ons was, ons man so de mate gebreinspoel, hier weet. En by ons was het totale gevoel van, Simonsberg, dis die oopgesprek. Dis nou tyd vir communikeer, dis nou tyd vir dialoog. Ons het verskye ouwens gehad as sprekers op sonde aan, oor anders denken is hier, om by die waarheid uit te kom. So, Simonsberg was bekend daarvoor. En ons het gevoel net, dit het wat een groot mate oorgespoel op campus die had gesê, nie allemaal wat nie saamstem in Zuid-Afrika is een vijand, is een communist nie, is die duivel nie, weet. Uh, en ek, uh, op campus as suks, denk ek, het ons uh, baie goed gevoel oor die oorwinning. Die ander ding wat vir my interessant is, wat Willem vertel in sy onderhoud, is dat hy kon saam met Kennedy terugry lichthawe toe. So hy, the, the mere fact that it wasn't a purely transactional visit, I've, I've been there, I've done that, I'm, I'm leaving, he invited Willem in the car with him. En Willemse vertelling daar, soos nou interessant, dat hy het hoofdzakelijk geluister en wil uitvind, hoe kon iemand soos Willem, een wit, jong Suid-Afrikaner, Hoe kom gloe jy wat jy gloe en wat is dit precies wat jy gloe oor die toekomst wat jylle generatie tegemoet gaan? Ek denk dit sê iets van Kennedy vir my, dat hy daai moeite gedoen het om rechtig te probeer luister. I am here in South Africa to listen as well as to talk. Less to lecture than to learn. Whatever our disagreements, neither your country nor mine, is under any illusion that there is only one side to any issue, or that either of us can coerce or quickly convert the other to share our point of view. To I know weg is, was daar, uh, ek het jylle mos gesê, uh, reaksie gewees, dalk van die overheid of dalk van die huis? Nee, Wat was die reaksie? Nee, jy weet, het, het in huis, om het so te stel, was ons tevrede, dat dit dat, 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 een sukses was, jy weet, maar ons het om beet gehad, ons het nie teruggestaan, ons het ons in die universiteit verdedig, tot om maat het ons nie bestel verdedig, nie weet, waarom nie, nie allemaal van ons samengestel het nie, maar ons het gevoel, ons het die oorhand, en ek denk dit was die rede vir een baie goed 
grote vieren ook achterna als je zal doen. Doch van overige kant nooit te dank is zijn. Want die volgende dag die Cape Town zit gedraaid. Superboon welkom voor kinderen die hier wat bij je complimenteren was en wat opgeteld moest geweest zijn door die overige. Maar tot vandaag dan ook nooit een brief van maar geluk mensen. Je laat eigenlijk zo, was het goed gevoel bij. D dit was voor Simonsberg een definierende oomlik over wat er soort kosthuis hulle wil word, want hulle was toe omtrend amper een van die twee, drie jongste kosthuise ja. geweest. Ja, ja. Baie correct. Ek denk vir daardie rede ook was Simonsberg ge op, op, op geoormerk uh, op daai stadium om die Engels sprekende elementen tussen ons en ek wil, wil genoeg te plaas. Want uit die avondzaak bij ons, en het persoon was ek en die kerm met die naam van Andrew Newton Thompson, by vierige uh, sak daai die sessie weet. De, maar een groot feit dat dit op die einde van in een klomp Engels spreken is. Ik heb ook geschreven artikels voor die Simons Bergen. En op dat stadium dat ik de ons in 80 en 270 Engels spreken is die gehad. En om daar die reden, omdat ons meer kan liberaal doen. En die ons geweldige groot aanklank voor ons gevind, je weet. Uh, maar dat onze pas aangeer op, 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 op die gebied was, is ik trots op vandaag. Aie, aie. Ik onthou mijn broer het nog van gesê, Ik kan niet geloven dat die volgende president van Amerika zo'n so dun stemmetje heeft. Maar ik, ik onthoud die feit dat daar mate van verluchting was, dat daar een element van trots was dat een Kennedy, American royalty, en his entourage visited Stellenbosch. It was, it was an achievement, whether you agreed with him or not. If we all of us are to conquer anew the freedom for which our forebears gave so much, we must begin with a dialogue that is both full and free. En die mooie ding vir my kom uit een van jullie koranten uit. Geef vir my een bykie, dan gee ek vir jou een bykie. Maar geef vir my niks, dan vat ek alles. Is dit nie die geschiedenis van Zuid-Afrika en ek maar nie te doen? Ja, absoluut. En ek kan my indink, dat as ek in 1966 hier gesit het, uh, vergeer wat ons nou weet van die geschiedenis uh, en, en hoe dinge uitgespeel het, dat dit een wonderlijke moment vir jong Zuid-Afrikaners met een blink toekomst was, uh, om kritisch te wonen voor die pad voor en toe van hierdie land. broadcasting system Andy West was in the hallway kitchen hallway in the ambassador hotel last night when Senator Kennedy was shot he is perhaps the man who was closest to the senator when the shots were fired it is possible he has not only Senator Kennedy oh my god Senator Kennedy has been shot Senator Robert Francis Kennedy died at 1.44 a.m. today, June 6, 1968. At the time of his death, he was uh, 42 years old. When I heard that Bobby Kennedy was assassinated, I was totally, totally devastated. I knew that the world had lost a very bright light, a, a compassionate, clever, highly moral leader of note. Any of us know all the answers to the future. Any of us know uh what all the solutions to the problems that affect our particular country or affect the world. But at least to keep challenging, at least to keep looking for solutions. That's what youth is. That's the challenge of youth. That's the challenge of young people. And that's why I'm proud to be here tonight with all of you. Bobby Kennedy's assassination was a terrible event. We would have seen a different America, and I think we would have seen a different world had he lived. But we had so much more social media soos Ethel was hy hier vir een baie belangrike missie en ons kon nie genoeg van hom kry nie, maar ons het baie goeie helle verering vir die manse standpunt gehad en sy eerlijkheid daarom trend. Ja, dit was uh, vir ons een roerende, baie, baie roerende. 
Bob Shade. Senator Bobby Kennedy, a man who aspired to the summit of greatness, but who died along that noble route, victim of an assassin's bullet. How bravely Mrs. Ethel Kennedy and her eldest son, Joseph, bore themselves on this day. As the funeral train passed through town after town, the people of America paid tribute. I think what urblij is the fact that 55 years later, staan ons vandaag hier zo in praat steeds over dit. Wat wijs dat dit is niet door het gesmoer niet. Daar rumpel van hoop, waarvan Robert Kennedy gepraat het, is nog steeds bezig om rumpelkies te maken. Weet en wat de voorrecht was het verstel een bos om hem hier zo te kon gehad het al was het net voor mijn rasse eer. of Cape Town, his widow came to see the new South Africa. President Mandela said that Robert and John F. Kennedy had both promoted democracy worldwide. What happened uh, to both uh, Robert and his brother, John F. Kennedy, indicates the extent to which uh, they were ahead of their times. Transformation here under the leadership of President Mandela that is so without rancor or bitterness has given not only the people of South Africa, great hope and optimism, but it's there for all the world to see that change can be done peacefully. <laughs> In 1996, um, I was Primarius of Simonsburg and I had the opportunity of being a little bit more personally involved in this uh, historic visit as the Kennedy family came to South Africa to celebrate 30 years um, since their previous visit. Now, as a Simonsburger, I found it quite strange that Simonsburg did not feature in the formal program of this visit. I saw the, what I deemed to be their tour leader with a notepad walking around, scrambling with all the plans. And I walked up to him and I said, you know, could you confirm whether or not um, the Kennedys will be visiting Simonsburg? And he said, Simonsburg? Um, and I started explaining the history to him, never heard about it. Uh, and eventually I explained the story of, of Ethel being in the dining hall and the spoons tapping on the tables. And he said, just give me a second. And he, he walked across to her and he, and he indicated to her that she should quickly speak to me. The program was very tight there to be at a Lanzarac dinner afterwards. And uh, I contacted a lot of first years from Simonsburg. And I said to them, they've all got to make their way down to the end law. So when the whole formality, formal gathering exited, there were about 12 first years from Simonsburg ready to jump into the left front seats to assist these vehicles on their route to Lanzarek. Um, and clearly we hijacked all the vehicles and pulled into the Simonsburg parking lot over here, only to be met by hundreds of Simonsburgers on the lawn, uh, abruptly starting to sing the Corsais Lit, etc. And tears burst into her eyes uh, on the lawn here. And we just had an incredible moment as a Corsais, um, almost in camera, because it wasn't scripted and no one else was here. Just Simonsburg and the Kennedy family. Yeah, I think um, Kennedy's boodschap van um, na mekaar te luister, um, jou omgeving en jou omstandighede in acht te neem, en nie noodwendig te vraag waar jy vandag is nie, maar miskien te vraag waar moet jy wees een dag, bly relevant vandag. En ek dink, uh, instanties soos Simonsberg en enige Corsais um, in die context is die perfecte plek waar jong mense deurlopend vraag kan vraag, deurlopend van die gesag wat boel is te bevraag teken op een op gedisciplineerde manier, maar toch nie um, sigte verloor van waar jy moet wees eendag nie. Beide, beide individueel, maar ook as een organisatie of een instantie soos Simonsberg. En ek dink sy toespraak bly baie relevant in die context. Ek dink Robert Kennedy so beindruk wees waar Zuid-Afrika is en waar die campus vandag is ten spuite van die, die problemen waarmee ons sukkel. Ek, ek dink ons land het geweldig ver vooruit beweeg. Ek dink die campus is in alle opzichten anders te dankzij diversiteit as wat het was in die tijd toe ek een student was en in die tijd toe ek een klein, klein sienkie nog was. Hy sê gehoud van wat hy sien. In this fantastic and dangerous world, we will not find answers in old dogmas, repeating outworn slogans, fighting on ancient battlegrounds against fading enemies long after the real struggle has moved on. We must change to master change. We must retain what is the best of our traditions. And for this, we look to the young people, the new children of a time of change. Yet the very education, which equips you for service to mankind, also prepares you for a place in society far removed from the problems for which solutions 
are just so desperately needed.